After the eight hours, I messaged my mum, like, mum, I found my husband. And what's crazy is he called his brother to be like, yeah, I found my wife. Hey everyone, it's your girl Tully T and welcome to a brand new season of the My Love Is podcast. The podcast brought to you by Bumble, the dating app that allows women to be firmly in control. One thing about me is I love love and my love feels like home. It's warm, it's comforting, it's accepting and it allows me to be both vulnerable and revealing. And this season I'm going to talk to a bunch of people who are going to tell me what their love is, what it means to date outside the status quo and also all of the many levels of being desired. I am so excited to chat to people and I will also be chatting to some guys who are going to tell me what love looks like and dating looks like from their experience because that's important too. So I've got my girl, Tony Tone, with me today, who is not only loving out loud, but is actually being loved, <laughs> big and bad, <laughs> outside for the whole world to see, and I love to see it. And I'm so excited to talk to you about everything Black love, what it means to you, and also what that looks like, being a successful Black woman. And I can't call you successful without telling people what your credits are, because you're not a small girl in this game. <laughs> You're not a small girl. You are a Sunday Times bestselling author, same sis. <laughs> Love to see it. A content creator. And also, if you are on Twitter and haven't seen Tony's tweets, you're, you're not on Twitter. Like, fix up your timeline. <laughs> it's not the right thing to do. Tony Tone, thank you so much for being here with me. How are you, babe? I'm good. Thank you for Yay, having me. Thank you so much. You know what? I feel like... We should have had a chat a long time ago. Yeah, I agree. But it's this just like long never overdue. happened. Long so overdue. we went to the same uni. Yeah. Yeah, we what, we what. Sorry, it's like a cult. I can't, <laughs> I can't mention Brunel University without it saying we what, we what. And I feel like it's made some really good people. It has. It, There's yourself. a lot of creative talent that's come out of our uni. It's so good. How's life been? Good, I can't complain. You're glowing. So Thank clearly you can't <laughs> complain. Clearly you cannot complain. But before we start, I want us to get to know each other a bit deeply. Okay. And I'm going to steal some questions from the Bumble question game, which is actually on the app. So these are like quick fire questions. Kind of like warm up the thing. Okay, so I'm going to ask you them. All right. And I'm also going to answer it. Just so we both equal playing field. Okay, cool. Okay. <clears throat> what is the greatest misconception about you? Gosh, um, I think people assume I'm super serious and uptight when I'm actually very laid back. But I think because I share like life advice, everyone thinks I'm like really strict, you know. Do you know what I think? I think you're strict. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Clearly, I can't remember this Okay, that is a yeah. I think my thing is people think I'm not friendly. Really? It's kind of on purpose because I want people to leave me alone. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. It works out like for you. Fair okay, fair it's fine. Okay, what's your love language? Quality time. All right, okay. Yeah. What about yours? I'm an acts of service babe. Oh, really? I'm an acts of service babe. And of recent, gifts has been creeping up. You know what? Your, your love languages are fluid. They can change. Because I wasn't really big on like physical touch so much. And now yeah, it's like, like quality that. time, physical touch. I like with that. Age. Don't touch me. Oh, you don't like that? I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> like physical touch is the lowest every really? single time I do the quiz. Without oh, the man. Interesting. But maybe we'll get better. Okay. <laughs> when do you feel the sexiest? Oh, when I'm around my man. Because, do you know why? Because I'll be wearing a bonnet, I'll feel like a mess, and he still makes me feel like I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. Aww. And sometimes I'm just like, you're saying this because you love me, don't I? But yeah, when I'm around him. Okay, I've got a specific time I feel really sexy, and I try to make it happen at least once a day because I just think it's a nice thing to feel. It's when I've, like, showered, moisturised. So you do the first layer of moisturisation. I get that. And then I fold oh, myself wow. up, and then I put a nice, like, silk rope on. I get that. Oh, my God, no one can stop me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's I get that. That's the world. Yeah, so that's, that's there. Me. Okay, ooh, what's the first thing you find attractive about someone? Um, I think probably smile, you know, smile and teeth. Okay. I like, I like someone who has like a big smile, really friendly. I think that's it. Okay, that's yeah. nice. I'm a presence kind of guy. Oh, really? Girl. Yeah, yeah like if, overall aura. If you just walk in the room and there's just a je ne sais quoi. I love that. The je ne sais quoi. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, I get it. Like a you vine. You can't put a finger on it, but it's like, oh, who's that? Yeah, sauce. Yeah, it's sauce. sauce. I like yeah, the sauce. Yeah. That's my first thing. Okay, last one. What's something you've done uh -huh. that you never do again in the worlds of dating? Because there's many things. God. Oh my God, yeah, there's, I have a whole book of them, uh, <laughs> things I wish I knew earlier. Um, let me think. Probably prioritising someone else to the detriment of my own happiness. Right, okay. Like, no, like my happiness is very important to me. It's a priority to me and I will never do that again. Okay, that's fair. What about you? I think it would be like overlooking things. You know, sometimes oh, yeah, from early no, on, no, someone no, tells yeah. you who they are. But I'm like, no, this can't stop me. I can't see. <laughs> yeah, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah, but what if I can't read? 
and we considered that Tony. And I think that's one thing I'm going to stop doing. As soon as I see the sign, the yeah, sign that's big and white letter, pay attention to I'm going to pay attention to yeah. it and I'm going to walk away. So I think that's one thing okay. I'm stopping. Yeah, doing. I think that's a good one. And I think that's an advice you give, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah pay, pay attention to the red flags and yeah. the green flags. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, quick one. This is, this is not in the questions, but I mm-hmm. want to ask it. What's a good green flag? Because I think we talk about red flags a lot. Yeah. I think a good green flag is someone who is a great communicator. And I think sometimes we assume communication is very much about talking, but it's about listening to. Mm -hmm. So someone who gives you the freedom to speak, who listens to you and who listens to understand. Right, okay. Yeah, I would say I like someone that's interested and interesting. Oh, it's like, yeah, like you're an interesting person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're also interested in what I've got to say and who I'm about, but also you've got things about you as well. So I think that's a massive green flag for me. Okay, I feel like we're warm. Okay, I feel like we're warm. So now we're warm, I'm going to get deep into your business. (laughs) (laughs) I'm diving right Right, right into into your business. So like, like I said earlier, you love out loud. Yeah. And you are loved out loud. And I think anybody who follows you, who's seen you around, knows you have a partner. Yeah. How did you meet? Okay, so it was in Insta, Instagram. And Wait, bas- it was a DM? Yeah, basically, he'd been following me for a year and a half. Right. And resharing my tweets on his stories. And I had no clue. Okay. And then like, yeah, after, yeah, year and a half in, basically, I saw that he had commented under something. So I clicked his page. I was like, who's that one on his page? I was like, who is that? <laughs> I was like, no, that's why it's gorgeous. I'm not going to front. I saw his face. I was like, oh my God, he's fine. And that's a lot for me because I don't really have crushes like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so basically, yeah, I thought, you know what? Fine is fine. There's fine people all over the world. What's his mindset like? So I went through some of his posts. And I was like, I really love the way he thinks. Well, you could figure out his mindset from his posts. Yeah, but, but he, he's a content creator. So, okay. Yeah, okay, so it's not like okay. just posting pictures. He was okay, posting videos. Okay. He was talking about dating. He was talking about love relationships. And I was like, this is in my realm. This is in my space. Okay. And his attitude towards dating. And I was like, oh my God, I love that he thinks like this and he has this mindset. And so I followed him back. And then officially at that point, he became like my Instagram crush. And I hadn't had a crush since I was like, what, like 16? So it was a big deal for Crushes me. Crushes are the best. Yeah, I was like, oh my oh God, my I God, had a so good. proper but crush. I had a heartbreak after a crush. <laughs> like, why do I care so much? <laughs> <laughs> why do I care so much? <laughs> why am I so I hurt? I haven't, I haven't, because it's been so long since I had a crush, yeah. to be fair. Um, yeah, so here's my Instagram crush. And you know how, like, us ladies do strategic positioning? Of course. So I was like, okay, now I'm following him back. He'll see that. Let me, you know, like a few posts. Okay. Like, he, he responded to some of my stories. So I was like, okay, let me do the hardy ha he he And I thought I was flirting, yeah. but I'm a rubbish flirt. So I was just having normal conversation. Yeah. And he was like, that was not flirting. But eventually, we, we spoke enough to the point that he asked me for my number. Then we started, like, FaceTiming every day. And within two weeks, he bought a ticket to come to England. Two weeks? Within two weeks, he bought his ticket. And, yeah, the rest what of What was you doing on FaceTime? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Two Our weeks. second FaceTime call, so day two, was an eight-hour-long convo. Well, just under eight hours like seven and a half literally we got on the phone it was right outside we finished and it was dark and what were you talking about for eight hours everything and anything no no genuinely what did you talk about for eight we hours we were talking about family how we were raised you know what I'm just it sounds like far no, but it was like very like fairy tale mm, mm, mm. like whirlwind romance and I honestly thought I would never be in that kind of situation but having been in it I'm just like it's yeah it just was amazing so after the eight hours were you like yeah I'm sold after the eight hours I messaged my mum like mum I found my husband and what's crazy is he called his brother to be like yeah I found my wife and I didn't know that and until we like were official we talked about it we were like get out of here after that hour phone call I was like this is my person so when you first saw him because it's all well and good like the texts and yeah. then the facetimes but in person were you worried that the chemistry might not be there you know what I wasn't okay because we talked every single day for hours so for me it was like the only thing that could happen because I facetimed him I knew he was attractive. I knew how tall he was. I knew (laughs) his... Important things. Yeah. No, like the stuff you can't gauge by a phone call, right? Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. I knew all that from, like, FaceTime to him. The only thing, the only risk I said to my friends was that, you know what? I know I'm attracted to him physically. I know I'm attracted to his mindset. The only thing that could happen is if he had, like, bad breath. That's it. That's the only thing I would know over the phone, right? That's fixable. Yeah, and I was like... What's not to love? And then when I saw him, like, come to Heathrow and walk towards me, I was like, oh, my God, he's even more attractive in real life. I just felt like like a, like a schoolgirl. It was crazy. So I think I remember seeing that online. Did you post a video of when you first saw him at Heathrow? I think. That yeah, happened. or I think there's, like, a TikTok video around that world. And I remember seeing that. I think it was, maybe, no, it was actually the first picture you guys posted. 
Oh, that, okay. Yes, that, that which was like, bang, here's my man. And you're both extremely good looking people. Oh, thank So you. the picture slapped, like it was <laughs> sensational. The picture did the round. That picture did the round. And like, me and my friends always talk about like posting your partner. Yeah, yeah. So when I saw that picture, I was like, I will be damned if I've been on Instagram for so many years and a picture of a boyfriend is what gets the most likes. <laughs> How dare you, yeah, Paul? I can't lie. Like, I'll, the be posting, I'll be posting inspirational tweets, no one pictures it. of myself. But when it comes to like him in the shot, that's what does it. Yeah. See, that's my fear about posting a guy on the internet. Mm. I think outside of, I think everybody's normal fears is that like you don't want to be embarrassed. Yeah. You're worried about like if this relationship ends, you're going to yeah. have to post somebody else. What does that look like? And I genuinely, I've said with my own mouth that I'd rather eat a denim jacket. <laughs> Imagine the texture of a denim jacket <laughs> <laughs> with no water. Like oh that's what it's like a denim jacket. Okay. No, like no lubrication. <laughs> Nothing. Just okay. the old denim I'm jacket. I'm imagining it. I'm imagining it. Didn't post the man on Instagram. Oh, wow. Well, I, really? like, I think I would just love to do that. But really? I say that, but I think I'm getting my mind's getting changed. Okay. What made you do it? You know what? I feel like when it comes to posting or not posting, there is no right or wrong way to love somebody. I think the key thing is that the person you are with feels love and you feel fulfilled in your relationship, mm -hmm. right? So for me, my, my natural kind of approach and preference would be to love out loud. That's how I am. Yeah. And the times I have loved in private, it's because there was a presence of doubt. Whether it, right, okay. I don't know whether I want to marry this person or not. I don't know how committed they are to the relationship and me. Or they're the ones that said, I want to, yeah, keep it low key. But that's not my nature. Like, mm. if I'm doing that, it's because there's like a little element of concern. Right, okay. And I guess with him, there is just an absence of doubt. Like I've never felt so loved and so seen and so valued in my life. And it's the kind of relationship where like, like, I just want to scream from the rooftop. That's honestly how I feel. And that is how he makes me feel. And I just thought to myself, I celebrate like my career accomplishments. I celebrate my family. I celebrate things I do in my private life. And I want to celebrate my partner in the same way because mm -hmm. like he's just amazing. And I'm just like so happy and he's going to be. And the thing is, he's such a big part of my life now. Yeah. And our goal is for us to be in each other's lives forever. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to live in fear with this person because he doesn't make me feel fearful. Yeah, yeah. He, I just feel so free and so vulnerable, like free to be vulnerable with him. And that's not to say like our relationship is perfect because it's not like we have disagreements. We don't always see eye to eye. But I think it's about understanding that as far as like my goal and his goal for the future, like our goals align and our investment in the relationship feels equal like I feel like I've met my equal for okay. the first time in yeah. my life and it's both equal is... he posts you as much as you post yeah. it's not a thing that's a one-sided thing exactly yeah. that's another thing I mm -hmm. think sometimes people like try not to post their partners because they're like you know what? I don't want to be the only person sharing but I'm all up and down the gap I'm yeah. all over his Good. page and I, I also think like the conversation about posting I will say that in some communities, there is more passion behind it. As an example, my friends and ex-co-workers from when I worked a nine to five, who were white, yeah. go on their Instagram, their boyfriends everywhere, and they're going everywhere. everywhere, everywhere. Right? And then the next boyfriend will be there. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and like, it doesn't no, it matter. Yeah, family, exactly. And it's normal, no one bats an eyelid. But no, in the black is. community... Oh, I've got so many. I think it's so much deeper than what we make it out to be. Mm. I think there is something about black women feeling like they have to fulfill... Our love sometimes feels political. Mm -hmm. It feels like it has to prove a point. It has to work because mm -hmm. there is so much like reason or why this is important to be seen or not to be seen. Because I've noticed it recently, like loads of women don't post until their wedding day. Yeah, I've noticed that. Like they don't do a single thing until that, yeah. their wedding day. And then the wedding day's there <laughs> and then they post. Or sometimes they don't even they post on their, their wedding day. They post their wedding day, but they don't even yeah. post their partner. <laughs> like, like, no, 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 no. Like, 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 what is that? Why? Do you know what I think it is as well? It's... Okay, when you look at the like, I can't speak for every other community, but speaking for the Nigerian community or African community, you look at our parents, you look at the elders, you look at aunties, they can be very worrisome, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Especially when something is going great. There's like, oh, people are envious. Evil people eye, evil eye, eye. Evil eye. Yep. People yep. were destroyed. Yep. Every day, calamity mm -hmm. and potential for disaster. Yep. Like, 
African elders can be quite, I don't want to say pessimistic, but the reality is sometimes they can be quite pessimistic. And it's like conflicting information. My mum tells me not to trust a man ever. She's like, (laughs) she's like, even when he's next to you, don't trust him. I was like, but that doesn't make any sense. (laughs) Because you told me (laughs) these people are not good people. And I think in the community, there is like, so much kind of like, they can be very protective, especially when something is going good. And so what happens as a result is the next generation take that on. And we think we have to be very secretive and protect it because evil eye and people will want to destroy it. But um, ultimately, I think you need to feel fulfilled and you need to feel like I am loved, I am seen and I'm loved how I want to be loved. Yeah. And you also need to be honest to yourself about why you are either posting or not posting. Yeah. Like If you're posting and you're posting not because you love your partner, but you want to create content, that's not great. Mm -hmm. But if you're not posting because, oh, what if someone comes into my DMs and says, I'm coming to you as a woman. That's not great either. So be honest and understand why you're doing what you're doing. Why you're not doing it. Yeah, exactly. Because I think I have a fear of, imagine posting the picture and someone comments, LOL. Sorry, what's (laughs) the (laughs) thing? What's funny? I would love to know what it is that we're laughing at so I can laugh as well. But I do do think that's such a good point. It's like, are you not posting because there is doubt here? Yeah. Yes. If it's like, oh, we're both private people, we don't like because it then depends on how you it. post as yeah, well. If it's like you don't post anything to pertain to your private life, then that's fair. Exactly. It's consistent. Like, exactly. Yeah. And I think my fear has always been like, I don't want a partner to be part of my brand. Okay. Because, well, so even like, say, for example, you meet the love of your life. Yeah. You guys decide, oh, actually, yeah, we do want to get married. You still wouldn't want them to be associated with you at all. I, no, no, no. Uh, you associate with me. Okay. I'm just like, no, like you don't exist. Um, I don't want um, to be a part of my brand because I think. Uh, yeah. Okay, I get, so, I get it. like it's just, they become obsessed with that relationship, and that's what they want to see. And they it's like, do. let's say I go a week without posting it. Oh, they must not be together. Stop trying to work <laughs> things out. People are very mad. Yeah. But you know what? I do think that yeah, people do romanticize relationships, but honestly, I feel like the romanticizing is a product of our unwillingness to be open. If right, okay. when something is bad, yeah. we are so when a relationship is bad, people are so loud about yeah. it. Oh, there's relationship drama. You, I see TikToks, endless TikToks about all these sad love stories. I can't believe women are doing that. <laughs> Genuinely, there's no, there's. I won't air my woes out like oh, that. Really? No. I mean, I guess the transparency helps some people, but I think that's part of the problem though, because when things are great, we want to be secret. When they're bad, we're loud about how yeah. awful it is. And so what happens is people are not seeing these relationships or or just people being open and honest about having love in their life, being happy, being loved. And so when people do see that, it's like, oh, my God, this is so like out there. And oh, my God, this is so romantic and somewhat unrealistic and unattainable when it's actually very normal. Yeah. I know a lot of people in amazing relationships, but. They don't share. They just don't share it. They don't share it. Yeah. And so we think that people are having like these horrible relationship experiences when in reality, yes. not everyone is. Like, and I do think it's quite balanced. socials as well and hearing other women's like sad stories, we hold on to a hurt that doesn't belong to you. <laughs> like it's not, yeah. no one did that to you. Like, yeah. Why are you holding on to someone else's heartbreak? That never happened to you, sis. Yeah. In fact, you've had great relationships your whole yeah. life. <laughs> Men have been lovely to you. Like you don't need to hold on to someone's yeah. like bad, bad time. But I do think that links nicely to like couple goals because yeah. like you and your partner, if there's one thing you guys do, you take a great picture. Thank you. Like, you take a very, very good picture. He, he, he's, he's very photogenic. Yeah, I'm yeah, very, very photogenic. No, I think you're not better in pictures, honey. to be honest. No. <laughs> I've seen your pictures on someone's son and me. Me and someone's son. Me and somebody's... Somebody, oh, that's... Um, me and somebody's son. An IG page. It's an IG page, <laughs> which is... If you don't know about the page, to me and someone's son, it's just Sorry. a page of co- black couples. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just I to see. kind of, again, like, doing the whole, like, couple goals okay. and black love and blah, 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 blah. How, I I think you fit into the couple goals world. Maybe to people on an aesthetic level. Mm -hmm. But what I think people and adults particularly need to realise is that you are not privy to anyone's relationship. Of course. You cannot judge someone being goals purely on them being... um, aesthetically pleasing to Mm -hmm. you. Like that is, uh, that's not a great thing to do. And equally... There are people in relationships, celebrities in relationships. I'm like, oh, they're cute. I really like their relationship on the surface. But no one will ever be my couple's goals apart from me. Like, Mm -hmm. all I can do is try and have the best relationship with my partner that I can have. But I think, like, the whole couple's goals thing is 
not a healthy thing. I think it's absolutely I feel like, not healthy. It's, it's weird. Not. It's like, you should let people post their relationships without using them as like the you know, Sorry, pedestal. Of- nobody <laughs> above the age of 18 should have anybody they don't know as a couple. I, I agree. Not to your family. I How agree. are your mum and dad, your auntie and uncle, oh. your cousins and her husband? Yeah. That should be your goals. People who you know that have... They take a nice picture. Yeah, that, that is literally it. Like when people are like, your goals, I'm like, okay, okay, the pictures. And maybe you see videos of him like being sweet with me and yeah. stuff. And, and he's a wonderful partner, but equally... Do not shape your relationships around anyone else's relationships. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think you are headed for problems in your relationship if you do that, because you will be living not according to your needs, desires and wants, but what you think. What you think should be there. Yeah, exactly. Like you saw this person buy this person flowers every two weeks. Now you're looking at your partner like, yo. Yeah. Or you see someone on TikTok say, oh, my boyfriend bought me a Gucci bag. My this person got me a Birkin, this person. And you think that's like a normal. Yeah. Every day. Exactly. Because you know what I see a lot on TikTok and on socials that I kind of don't agree with if... I do agree with it on the basis of like, if he wanted to, he would. Because yeah, yeah. he can't. Yeah. <laughs> like, he literally can't. What does he literally, he literally cannot. cannot? He literally cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> literally he cannot. It's like your man works a nine to five, he's working on a big project and something happens and you want him to come see you. Like, if he would, if he wanted to, he, he would. He no, would, but really, he honey. literally cannot. Yeah. He has things he's worked He's got yeah, things like, to do. Like, yeah. he's literally, <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I get it on the basis of it, but like, yeah, yeah. no, there are times where like he cannot level, and yeah. you cannot put what you saw on the internet and leverage it as to like what your relationship exactly, is. Exactly. Um, you are in an interesting world of, actually, you and many other British women yeah. are jumping ship. And I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> because what happened to black British love? Because you're doing intercostal, intercontinental. Yeah, yeah, we are. So your partner is American. Yeah, so he's an American citizen, but his father was a diplomat. So he actually grew up in different countries. He speaks three languages. Oh. So he grew up in Angola, speaks Portuguese. He went to boarding school in Zimbabwe, speaks Shona, and then obviously like... Not a multicultural king. <laughs> I'm keeping this one, Tali. I'm keeping this one. Um, so he moved to America when he was in his late teens. Right, okay. And he's been there ever since. So okay. yeah, he's an American citizen, but he's like a blend. Okay. He's a blend. He's multicultural. Yeah, multicultural. Why did you give up on the British law? <laughs> <laughs> what you know what did it for you? It's not that I gave up on mm-hmm. British love. I just went where I was celebrated. Oh. Like, I just went where I felt like, I see qualities I want in a partner, in someone, and they're giving me the energy I want. Mm -hmm. So if he, for example, was British in England, it would have been a no-brainer. But the thing is, like, I just hadn't met anyone and felt like, yes, I'm really fulfilled. This is my person. This is what I want. And I am someone who's, like, very... I'm a very independent person. I love my own space. I'm very good on my own. So for me to meet someone and feel like, wow, you have added value to my life that I already love is a big deal. And I just felt like with him, I had that. So I just said, you know what? The ocean is not going to stop me. Clearly. And it didn't stop the hair. Ain't no mouth can hide that. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. Really? I like, like what, what, what it's just like, it's so far. And also cultural differences. I'll be honest, when I've seen my interactions with like American men when I've gone on holiday, yeah. because it's like, I don't think there's a black British woman alive who doesn't go to America and get so much attention, she kind of can't believe it. <laughs> it's in, no, like, yeah, it's, it's like the compliments are amazing. And then, dare I speak, dare I drop, oh, bloody hell. They're like, oh my God. <laughs> you know what I mean? The bloody like, hell. The bloody it's hell. It gets up every single time. And I think you get that. You get all the attention and they just kind of like, but sometimes, uh-huh. I'll be honest, they come across corny to me. Okay. And I think maybe it's because we're used to the stushness. Okay, yes. You know what? I agree with that. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so I actually agree with that. So my boyfriend is Nigerian. Yeah. But I agree with a UK women being used to, UK black women yeah. being used to the stushness. Because one thing I've noticed is that I personally love a bit of corny. I actually think... Oh, okay. Do you know what I say to my friends? Mm-hmm. I say, if there is a man on this planet that you are attracted to that other men call corny, that's the person you should date. Right, because okay. let me tell you something. What, we, what I see in society, what people label as corny is actually, or label as being like a sin, is being devoted to your relationship. Look at Rus- is it Russell Wilson, yep. Ciara's husband. Up and down, people call him corny. Why? No, because he's not corny at all. Because it's, like he's really loving. Yeah. he gets he participates in her TikToks. He he supports her like, and I think sometimes we can. 
we can be used to a very, you know, in Britain, we have like a very stiff upper lip, don't we? And Let's stiff, gush, yeah. Yeah, and we can be used to very like reserved people. Yeah. But I, everyone's different. Everyone's entitled to like that. But me personally, I don't feel as loved when someone isn't highly affectionate. High, I want to hear words of affirmation. I want you to grab me. I love PDA. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. you to like, just the other day, like my boyfriend wrote me a song and he paid someone to sing it. Oh, he sent it to me. Oh, he no, no, he's not. <laughs> he yeah, he, he's not yeah, no. I mean, he's amazing, but no, no, he's not a singer. So like stuff like that is stuff that my friends might be like, okay, that's cheesy. But Wait, I'm like, how would I feel? I like that? love that. And I love that stuff. I'm such a romantic at heart though. See, I'm a romantic, right? But I'm more like a yo in a romantic way. Oh, like what's good? Yeah, like in a like, <laughs> Like, babes, that's what's been the right. Never mind. Actually, no, as long as he didn't sing it. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, as long he, as he's like, oh, someone that could <laughs> sing it. That, yeah, that feels quite nice. Well, I think this man called me, left a voice like singing. I'm like, sir. Yeah, no, I get I get it. There are a lot of things that I think is so cute that some of my friends are like, ew. Like, I, I don't want to say too nice, but sometimes. I'm like to my friend, oh, yeah, this is great. He does this and this and he's so that. And she's like, no, he's too. Yeah, I think we need to recognise, though, when stushness becomes nonchalance. Because nonchalance, I don't play about that. Like, yeah. be about me and be about me. Carry me on your head, if possible. <laughs> I want you to be about me. But in a cool way? But in like a chill way. <laughs> in a chill way. Yeah, so I guess maybe um, someone who still gives you those words of affirmation and still demonstrates those loving actions, but maybe not in a way that's uh, dramatized to you or overly romantic. So for example, like, have you seen that TikTok where um, like a girl's like, oh, she gets a text like, oh, hey, beautiful. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. She's like, oh. And then another guy <laughs> messages her and he's like, big Ed, what's good? And she loves and it. She loves that. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like maybe like, um, the difference is still being able to see the action because action is very important that they are devoted to you they are committed to you they care about you hearing that they care but they're not doing it in a way that you might find yeah. too much but if someone is not delivering on the action like they don't see you when they say they're going to see you and they don't tell you look amazing mm -hmm. um, they don't uh, say that they love you that's not stush that's completely yeah, just nonchalant absolutely. whereas stush is a bit like you look nice however you look nice but it's like you know that he's saying you're mm -hmm. stunning but he's yeah. doing it in his own way yeah. I think it's really important to have personalized romance I feel yeah. like there's oh, not a one God. size fits all for all romantic. Yeah. Like, a, whatever your old partner found romantic might not be what I found romantic. Like, that get to know me and personalize so your romance to me. That's really important for me. I feel like that is a very wise thing because it's true. Everyone is different. One size does not yeah. fit all. And just because you are really romantic in a certain way to one person, yeah, it doesn't mean the other person will like it that, that way. Exactly. I don't think that they're yeah. that. So like we agree, we're both like lover girls. Would you say you're a lover girl? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm a lover girl to my core. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I love love. But I've got one tattoo. Mum, if you're listening, I don't. It's not real. <laughs> and it says love on it. But, like, the oh. years I thought my mum was not. I was like, mum, it's fake. I can rub it off. It's fine. Well, I also should think I used to clock around the house and I lived at home because it's on my ankle. Um, so, like, I love love. I love the idea of yeah. love. I love love even outside of romantic love. Yeah. I feel like there's an importance in all different aspects yeah. of love and things like that. But we're both women that are about our careers. Yeah. Like, I think for me, it goes like faith, family, friends, partner, love, all of that. And then career. Like, my career means an awful lot to me. And yeah. I feel like sometimes you're punished with that. Yeah. I think if you are successful, if you are visible. Yeah. As a black woman, you're yeah. somehow punished for it when it comes to finding love. Yeah. And I think many women that I've spoken to privately and publicly feel like, yo, if I like just wasn't in this space, I maybe would I would have found my person. And I've like had conversations with my therapist to be like, I will stop this. I'll stop it now for my partner and my life or whatever. Because it mm. feels like sometimes you have to give up one to have the other. Mm. You luckily haven't had to. Mm. How have you like maneuvered around that? I just told myself this. If someone requires me to dim my light in order for me to be with them, that is not the person for me. Mm. I should be able to exist as wholly as I am and be as true to myself as possible yeah. and find love. And you should be able to see me as I am 
if you're right for me and fit into who I am without me changing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always about being with someone who was supportive of my career. And I, I get what you mean, because especially with what I do, I write about love and relationships. So I had men online paint oh me gosh. as like a man hater. Men convinced I hate I them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be in real life. <laughs> if you write about relationships online no, no, and you hold men accountable, yeah. you hate men, yeah. right? And my thing was this, like, I don't cuss men for cussing men's sake. I hold men accountable. You can only be annoyed at my writing if the shoe fits, right? Yeah, exactly. My boyfriend didn't have an issue with my writing. My yeah. brother doesn't have an issue with, exactly. with my writing. My father doesn't have an issue with my writing. But men who obviously do what I say, <laughs> I have an issue with it. So I had like a fraction of men who thought I was just like, hated all of them and then there are other people that are like oh my god I can never date a girl that has more than like oh 50 followers uh blue tick whatever that's insane and it's yeah but for me it's like you know what in a way it's good because your success acts as a filter it filters mm -hmm. out the men that do not have the confidence to stand beside you. you yeah it filters out the men who would be intimidated by you it filters out the men who are not in support of what you do mm -hmm. so as frustrating as it is because it does deplete the amount of men that may holler yeah. like i got way more dms when i had a thousand followers oh, than when i had a hundred thousand well, that's the annoying thing about dating though it feels like a numbers game right and i think i've worked it out i thought about this many a times i think it's because our success to many men is not a selling point yeah it's not when they're so writing the wrong men. To the, when they're writing their list yeah. of things in the world where men sit down, where straight men sit down and be like, "I wanted to have I a big bunda." She's like, "I'm a nice mate. Yeah, I don't think they add success. Yeah. Whereas when women, yeah, we add we their list do. of things. You add success. Yeah. You add financial. You add all of those yeah. things. And I just never think it's not on their. It's not their selling point. Like yeah, for a lot. Of so so what? Yeah, <laughs> like so what? It's how they yeah. see it. But I get. I guess that's where it comes in. Like. Being with a man who sees your ambition and is like turned on by that, yeah, like, yeah. like who sees what you do and he's like, yeah, my babe is a boss, like she's yeah. killing it, like, and in their mind, it's not a deterrent. They think, oh, okay, power couple, oh, okay, it. let yeah. me, you know, mm -hmm. let me like continue as I am or or do this and that, so I can add even more value to what yeah. she's doing. So, yeah, it's 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 tough dating as a black woman. That I mean, everyone has the their own independent definition of success, right? Of course, yeah. But that people would define as successful yeah. it's harder, but it also comes with its advantages. You just have to change your perspective. I, I even think women that are not visible, that are highly successful, especially if we talk about finan financially, yeah. I think they face this as well. Oh yeah, oh my God. Like, there's movies about them all the time. That uh, high-flying woman who was successful I in the love love apartment and it's just her. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's, it's, I, I don't, don't know, there's one particular director, if you're successful, every you'll be dating anyway. Okay, well, I won't I, even say. No, let's <laughs> talk about it. And I'm gonna say this, yeah. Clip it, clip this. <laughs> Men are more groupies than women. Oh, yeah. And like, Have even done. though it's harder sometimes, you do get an influx of just groupies who kind of want to be the ones to say, yeah, yeah. oh, she's a man here on the internet, but not for me, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's like an ego thing. They're such, yeah. yeah. And I think it's really hard to suss out, like, who's here because they like me? Who's here yeah. for purely an ego to be yeah. like, Because wow. like, I have encountered, yeah. surprisingly, so many groupies. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure you have as well. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I guess, again, it very much comes down to really taking yourself out of the equation and analysing what they do and considering their intent as well. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one thing saying, oh, yeah, I want to go with you here and there and there. Oh, let's go to this event, this red carpet, this, 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 this. And it's another thing where, like, when the cameras aren't around, people aren't around, they're in the trenches with you. They, they're talking to you about your most vulnerable moments, your most difficult moments. They're supporting you when no one else is, no one else yeah. is seeing that. Mm -hmm. Like, you can rely on them. And I think that's when you really see that, okay, you're here for me, you're down for me, yeah. as opposed to the experience. Because yeah. someone could come and then be down for the totally experience. But there's another person who's experience. like... <laughs> I'm sure it is. I have to advertise myself somehow, though. But I'm sure there's someone who's like, you know what, the experience is great, but there's so much more to her. No, absolutely. And I think the the, pe the person, it's always like, you are so concerned about all aspects of my life. Yeah. Like, every aspect of me concerns every me. Every aspect. And I love that about someone. I yeah. think that's when I feel my most seen. I'm like, yeah. you care that I got this gig. You care about all of the surrounding aspects of who I am and what I do. And I'm sure you find that in your partner. So there's just general yeah. care of who Tony Tony is privately and publicly. Exactly. And for me, that was like, because my career means so much to me, I said to myself that I have to be with someone who supports me and 
one massive green flag for me was like all the content that other men were casting that I was yeah. sharing. He was reposting it for like a year and a half. Ah, and I, okay. Yeah, and then I went to like my um, DMs and I was seeing like, mentioned you in 2020, mentioned you in 2020. What, mentioned so you'd you. been ignoring this man for five years? <laughs> no, not five, not five, a year and a half, a year and a half. A year and a half. It always reminds me. He's no, like, we could have been here a year earlier. No, but that's so true. You could have been happier. Think of where you were a year. No, that's not the word. Okay. No, no, Everything I think... happens. Everything I was wanting to say. I understand that, but I want you to think about <laughs> how happy you are now. Yeah. And when that could have started. I know. Compared to when it did. Read your DMs. Ladies, read your DMs. Read your DMs. <sighs> I know. I know. Because sometimes the DMs are not popping as what it yeah, should you know be. What? It, it's one thing about some men. The audacity. 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 Audacity, you know. If they're going to have one thing, it's going to be some audacity. And the ones that have the most audacity, this is my theory. When you have faced a lot of rejection in your life, mm -hmm. say, for example, you are not a man that women typically like gravitate towards, yeah. then you face a lot of rejection, right? Mm -mm. So rejection theory, the more rejection you face, the easier it is to cope with. It gets to a point where you're like, a no doesn't bother you, like, whatever, it is what it is. So you try, which in a way is a great you thing. You know what, I so think you that's try women should like, get. I think we should get more rejection oh, yeah, to make us more about making the first move yeah, and actually should. like taking control of our dating life because I think it got to a point now I was like I'm dating who picks me yeah as opposed to who you who want. I want to date and I, you know what I think that's like one of the great things about Bumble actually yeah. is where you make the first move yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's pushing women and I, and I love that women are feeling more confident when it comes to asserting like what they want I mean I need to obviously well I don't need to get better at it now but I wasn't the best at it, but I did what was I was comfortable with. So I like, you know, positioned myself. How do you strategically position yourself? Position okay, so these are my tips. Okay, tell me your tips. Because so, my aunt always talks about this. Her thing is that like, um, make yourself available to be toasted. You have to, you have to. <laughs> okay, so how are you positioning yourself? So, tell me. Talking online or real life? We'll do both. Okay, so online. Oh, we do online in terms of like dating sites. Okay. And in real life. Okay, so online. Let's say, for example, social media platform, for example. Yeah. So you might see their profile. Okay, you like one pick. Chill. See if they pick up on that. If they don't, okay, a week later, okay. you follow them. Okay. So if he noticed the like, he's like, oh, the girl who liked my pick is now following. Oh, okay, right, cool, okay. whatever. All right. See if they bite back and, yeah. and they follow. Mm -hmm. Now, if they bite back and follow, that's when you start going on the stories. Ha, 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 he, he. So oh, my God, the same thing happened to me. It's so hilarious. Yes. Oh, happy birthday. Have a great day. Da, da, da. But you, you're like opening room for conversation right, okay. and what you want to do is you want to create open-ended conversation you don't want to do like yes or no where they could be like yes. I always say that you can't just say like it's always like did you have a nice day oh how was your day what did you get up to right <laughs> yes no now you want to generate that conversation yeah and yeah so that's one good way to do it and I think in, in real life you want to be within vicinity because no one's gonna like dart across the room to talk unless right, you're like okay. really feeling someone you're not gonna dart across the room right okay so you want to you want to like you give them a smile. So it's like, hi, I'm smiling. So, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you spoke to me, I will not bite. Yeah. Um, you give them a smile and then you do your own thing. You have fun with your girls. And you do that because, you know, you need to show them that, you know what, I see you. By the end of the day, I have my own life. Yeah, exactly. I'm here with my girls. I'm having fun. Yeah. Right. And then it comes to a point where if they haven't, if the smile hasn't been enough, then maybe you walk in their area. Perhaps you want to go to the restroom. <laughs> or you want to, you know, you, you see your friend over there that you want to speak to, right? Right, okay. I just pass you, so I'm close enough that you just... Just notice me. Just tap okay, me. Okay, I like okay. that. Hi, what are you doing here, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if they don't bite, okay, they don't bite. But that's one way to do it without feeling like, oh my God, I'm going to face like immediate direct rejection. Yeah. Because if they don't follow up, you don't feel like you've made it you were clear yeah, that you exactly. were like trying to, mm -hmm. you know, be talked to, but you're doing enough that they might warm up to the idea. You know? Right. Okay. Okay. So earlier we spoke about the audacity men have. And I think the people that share their equal amount of audacity is like aunties and uncles, especially being black and yeah, African yeah, yeah, yeah. and parents. There is some form of audacity that is really big and bad <laughs> about them. And I say that in terms of like, where does that stand in how much you listen to people talking about where you should be in a relationship mm. and where you're at? And is there, is there like any sense of like pressure that this has to work? It's going to work. It's going to be great. Yeah. But is there a sense that like, because I've put it out there so much, because I've talked about this so much, yeah. this has to work for my family and also like for everyone who's looked at it from the outside? Um, I do not live my life for other people. No. Right. 
If people know my dating history, they know I do not shy away from leaving relationships, getting into new ones. I'm not going to stay in a relationship I'm not enjoying mm -hmm. because of somebody else to appease them because they are not living my life. I have one life to live yeah. and I want to be happy. If I spent my life or my career listening to other people, I wouldn't have written on Twitter. I wouldn't have a book. I wouldn't have done half of the things I've done because there were so many people saying whatever they wanted to say to discredit me or whatever they thought. Or basically they wanted me, me to live a life that they expected me to live, right? Yeah. So there is a, there's actually a book called The Five Regrets of, uh, of Dying. I know right, it's okay. quite, quite morbid. morbid. <laughs> but I, know, I know, sorry. But it talks about like, um, there's a lady who's an author now, but she worked in palliative care and she asked people on their deathbed, what are your top regrets? And in the top five, I think the top regret was living a life other people expected of you and not the life you wanted to live. Mm -hmm. And I have vowed to myself, I don't care about pressure. If I'm unhappy in a situation, and God forbid I get to that point with, with my partner, but hypothetically, if I was ever unhappy and we couldn't resolve it, I'm not going to stay in a situation to appease strangers that don't even have any shares in my life. Yeah. And people can say what they want to say and sh gossip how they want to gossip, share what they want to share, but they should spend more time building a fulfilling life for themselves and less time analysing other that people's. Way. The thing is, I think it's really easy to say that for strangers, right? I don't yeah. know you lot. I don't actually care what you think. Yeah. But I do think, especially as black women who have somehow become the immigrants' parents' dream. Uh, oh, right. okay. Like, do you know what I mean? Then, like... And I think that that quote was great in terms yeah. of like, live the life how you want rather than what is expected of you. But like before I was thought about, I think my mum has written out the narrative of my life. Oh, really? Like in terms of, like, maybe not practically, but like, I was going to go to school, get an education, get oh, okay. a job, get married, have kids. Yeah. Like, and if I think about it, her dream just wasn't big enough. Her, yeah. her story yeah. wasn't big enough for yeah. me. Her, even like, it, and it stayed my story in terms of I thought, yeah, that's what you do. Up until probably like my 20s. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is quite small for me. Like, yeah. I want something big. Oh, okay. I hold up. So I think it's easy to ignore random people on the yeah. internet. You can pressurise me what you want. Yeah. I don't know you. I don't care. But I do think a lot of black women, especially find it hard to ignure when it's coming from the people who oh, love them and people that they love. I don't know if you're like from a lucky family. I, when yeah, you, don't I, get you know what? I can't lie. I am. You're lucky. You're one of the lucky I, ones. I am. Yeah. I come from a very cool, laid back family. My family is amazing. Like any pressure I've ever felt in my life has not been from my family. It's been right, from like okay. my age mates or random strangers right, online yeah, yeah. saying, oh, you run about love and relationships. You're not married. When were you married? They love that one. So yeah. I, they love that one. They love one. that one. <laughs> My family isn't like your stereotypical Nigerian family. Right, my parents yeah. aren't your stereotypical Nigerian parents. Mm -hmm. I think people saw my family on a reality TV show that was aired last year. And they were even shocked by how like my parents are. So I, yeah, I've never ever felt pressure from family, but I understand it because my friends do. Yeah. But again, it sounds harsh. The same way strangers are not living your life. Sorry, it's, your, it's not your mom's life. It's not your it auntie's really life. Hers, yeah. You have one life to live and when the time comes that our parents are not here anymore, may that be like in a million years from yeah. now, because I didn't want to think about it, but it's going to be you. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be you and the bricks you like built. They're still here. It's because they come to the wedding, lovely time, great, whatever. Yeah. They're not part of your everyday. They're not. So even if they're still here down the road, they're not a part of your everyday. They don't know yeah. what it is that you go through. They don't yeah. know what it is about your unhappiness. And I really want black women to know that you are like entitled to a life of happiness that yeah. you choose. Yeah. It doesn't have to go up yeah. that script that someone else waits for you. Exactly. And this script is so outdated. So outdated. And I think it is very much about ticking boxes. One thing that aunties, our peers, uncles, mums, whatever, fathers, every, one thing everyone needs to understand, especially when it comes to dating, mm -hmm. is that it is much better to marry right than to marry fast. Yes. And a lot of the same people that are trying to apply pressure to us to get married are in marriages that they're not even that happy about. Are they about. even in the marriage? Yeah, or oh, they're not. My single auntie is the one that talks. I said, ah. <laughs> Worry about yourself. Leave my example that you don't marry enough. Worry about yourself. And it's like, you, we can, we can, allow the pressure to get to us. But one very real possibility is that we end up doing things for the wrong reasons. And I'm so glad that I didn't fall victim to the peer pressure because I would have just married for marrying sake as opposed to marrying someone that I feel is my equal, the person that I want to spend, truly want to spend the rest of my life with. And because of what I do, obviously I write on Twitter, I get a lot of DMs from women wanting advice. I have women saying I married young mm -hmm. and now I don't, I've, I'm in love with someone else. I don't love my husband. Mm -hmm. Or I married my husband because he was a nice guy, but I wasn't in love with him. I'm miserable. Or I want to, like, I get so many of those DMs. Yeah. So I think in a way, seeing that has also helped me 
just remind myself, sorry, it's not pressure you'll yeah. come and rest on my head. And I think the pressure married. for so many people ruins their relationship with their parents. Yeah. Like it genuinely, I have many people who are like, I need to move out of this house. Like, yeah. Now. Like I yeah. think it like, because I feel like there's other cultures who maybe don't have this pressure that have the luxury to just see. Yeah, just look how it goes. Just see how it goes. And, that's why, and also, because of the absence of pressure, that's why they're also more willing to post. Because it's like, oh, some things work out, some things don't. Exactly. You know, you like some person and they don't do you right. You find another person until you find your person and you're good. And as right. opposed to you find him, you marry yeah, him, stay you there. stay there. <laughs> no matter what, we're all so very, we're all so bodger, yeah. but, I remember my friend who's white who decided that she was going to leave her partner. Yeah. And I was like, do what makes you happy? I'm going to call the past. I'm like, how do we work this I know it's in oil. I know it's in oil. Yeah, she might even be, she'd be like, it's not always about happiness. I'm like, well, sis. So speaking about parents and cultures and things like that, your partner is also Nigerian, right? Yeah. Has he also got a relaxed family that's kind of like, whenever you're ready, do what makes you happy? Um... When it comes to marriage, definitely, yeah. yeah. His family, I mean, man, sorry, feels like they get yeah. in that aspect. Uh, yeah, a, mm. a lot of the time with African parents, they don't necessarily apply the same pressure they apply to their daughters, to their yeah. sons, when mm -hmm. it comes to marriage. Yeah. And I think, I don't know whether it's because of fertility or whatever, but yeah, he doesn't really get pressure to, to do things quickly. It's about doing things right. Okay, so earlier you said that you text your mum after yeah. the eight-hour conversation. <laughs> Do you know, there's, is there anyone in the world I want to talk to for eight hours? Okay, maybe. <laughs> oh, I thought you maybe. You thought about someone just there. Like, maybe, maybe. Okay, maybe. Have you done the meet the parents? So he's met my parents. Okay, how did I that mean, go down? That went really well. Like, I knew my parents were going to love him mm -hmm. before they met him. Okay. And they did. And what's crazy is that, like, my dad, he's not the easiest man to please okay and my dad loved him like Aww. the other day i was on video call uh to my boyfriend and my dad was in the background saying oh is that tywa i said yes because i said tell him i miss him i said okay <laughs> oh that is so adorable and my oh. mom loves him as well when my mom met him for the first time i was actually quite insulted because my mom came up to me she was like tony you are so lucky i'm like bruh what about him <laughs> he's lucky <laughs> i'm like really mum Come on. And she was like, Tony, you're so lucky. I was like, Mum. But that's quite nice for her to see it that way because she's like, oh my God, this is a great person yeah. for my daughter. She thinks he's amazing. Oh, that is so adorable. That's one thing I'm so jealous of that um, women who still have their dads in their lives or dads around, that they get to experience that thing of watching their dad with their partner. Yeah. I think it is so adorable. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this is such a nice thing to have like men that you care about so fiercely so deeply like like each other yeah be together i remember when we had dinner for the first time my dad was like tyra come sit here next to me i was like what is going on uh, <laughs> do they have things in common are they both into i don't know football what do you like you know what what do men like <laughs> do they have things in common i think my boyfriend has a lot in common with my brother as far as loving uh, tech right. liking cars and stuff with my dad i think the reason why they get along so well is my dad is a storyteller and my boyfriend loves storytelling and listening to stories and so on just on like on a communication level like just listening to my dad and just being like very willing to engage with him and I also think my my boyfriend is like very well mannered when it comes to dealing with like elders mm -hmm. so like he did well, the whole do ballet like the whole uh, like Nigerian you're about nice. and stuff and just like how he engages with them. There's a lot of respect there. Nigerian parents are big on respect. And so for them, it was just like seeing that someone respects us so much, gives them confidence that he's respecting me. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. So there's mum agree. Is that your husband? Does she agree? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, oh, she's she, sold. She's sold. She's, she's been sold. She's sold. And even my dad, my dad's like, so the tweet still stands, you've met your husband. Yeah, you know what? It stands, and in hindsight, he's so much more than that. He's become, like, my best friend, my confidant, my the love of my life. Like, he is, like, I couldn't have everything I wanted to meet in someone. He's, like, exceeded my expectations. Did you ever write a list? I did have a list. So I, I have, a list. have been putting off writing a list for years. Oh, really? Why? I think there's something quite fearful about writing a list, making it more tangible. So I, that's what I love about it. I'm I, all for manifestation. Don't yeah. you find hope a little bit scary? I'm the queen of hope. I, I find I'm such something an really like quite scary really? about, yeah. Like I've been saying to myself, I'm going to write this list. I'm going to write mm. this list. I'm going to put it all down, say what I want. And it's just there because I feel like 
nearly every black woman who I have been invested in and heard their love story, they've talked about the list. <laughs> Verna Davis talks about that. She sat down. Oh, she, yeah, she, 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 she wrote oh, everything I she wanted it. to the T. Yeah. And she got that to the T. Yeah. Ezzy marked every part of your list. Every single thing on my list and then some. So if you don't know about the list, the list is like, how can I put it? Okay, this is the best way to say it. If you go food shopping and you don't know what you want. Yeah. You grab anything. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah. if you're just not too sure like, what oh, you need, I, might, I, might need food. I might need milk, I might need this. But if you go with an exact list of exactly what it is yeah. you want, you're focused, you know what it is, you know what you don't like. That you know, is like, it. You don't like that, that version of milk, you like this version of milk. Yeah. And I think it does help when you're looking for a partner yeah. to have this list of like, here's what I love. But you have to be flexible with the list. I guess one thing I say, like I've written about this before, that there is a difference between settling and compromising. Okay. And I think sometimes people may not get everything on their list and they think they have settled, but it depends on the item at hand, right? So to me, settling is being in a relationship that does not fulfill you with a partner who does not value you, who does not contribute to your well-being, like you, who you're not attracted to at all. Mm. That is settling. Compromising is wanting a guy who is six foot two and meeting a guy who's five eleven and saying, you know what, I'm five three. Hey, it is what <laughs> it is. I'll manage, right? <laughs> Compromising is saying, you know what, I really, really love uh, green eyes and meeting a guy that has brown eyes and being like, I'm still attracted to him. That's like compromising. Like yeah. you might have like a list. To be fair, mine was not very superficial, but you may have a list that has some superficial qualities, but you're not settling if you meet an amazing guy that doesn't have some of them. Yeah. You're compromising, right? And I think sometimes we can we can conflate the two. And in writing my list, like I didn't the only physical quality I had was taller than me. Right, okay. Because in my mind, I'm gonna be attracted to you. Right, okay. If you need to be my partner, I can't yeah. not be attracted to mm -hmm, you, right? Mm -hmm. So it was just taller than me. That was my specific physical thing on my list. Okay. But everything else was very much about values. It was about character. It was about their behavior. And I think in writing a list, my advice to women would be when it comes to like having flexibility, understand that some boxes are bigger than other boxes. Yes. Like there may be some box that he doesn't tick, but if they're tiny boxes, whatever, and there may be some big boxes where he ticks them tenfold. Mm -hmm. Like that should mean more to you. What was I a non-negotiable on your list? Um, a non-negotiable, someone who believes in monogamy. Oh. And wants monogamy. That's a non-negotiable. And I say that because I've been in relationships in the past where we entered it, monogamy was the name of the game. And then all of a sudden there were conversations about, oh, I'm not sure whether this is for me. And it was like, skr, skr. okay, yeah. bye. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is, yeah. yeah. So for me, it was like someone who uh, believes in monogamy and who also believes in the value of family. Because mm -hmm. I come from a very close-knit family. And for me to, to have a partner, a lifelong partner, I want someone who believes in the value of family, who wants to invest in family, who wants to be a very supportive and active part of his family. Yeah. And that was like, non-negotiable for me mm -mm. like someone who's like pro yes I want to I want to build that you know that, that yeah. amazing family so I love the idea of that as well like you want to build us this is something that yeah. comes from us this is yeah I think it's a massive like you're about us exactly what are some of non your non-negotiable I know you don't have like a formal list I don't, you have, like, a, yeah, I don't have a yeah. handwritten list but I definitely have one in my head faith is a big one for okay, me yeah. I want us to have a shared faith I want yeah. there to be something that is above us yeah like you know, that's really important for me that we both believe that there was something above us yeah. like we're not the big we're not the we don't run yeah. this game necessarily I think that's really really important for me and this is like it might feel quite trivial to for people I really want someone I can have fun with that's so important I want to laugh with that you. is so important I want to have so much fun I with you I want that. you to be my G <laughs> you know what I mean like that is so important yeah. that we can just have such a good time because I'm like if we're in this we're planning to do life together forever is a long time to be miserable, it's, a, it's even a longer time. Yeah. It's a long time anyway. Yeah. <laughs> to then be miserable on top of that and not be able to laugh. I just want us to have a, a home of like laughter and jokes yeah. and just have a good time here. Like I feel like we're here visiting. Let's have a good time whilst we're here. Yeah. So that's really, really big for me. Um, before I let you go, this whole premise of the podcast is my love is Tony. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> what is your love? My love is life-changing. Oh. Yeah, I'll say life-changing. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to be big-headed, but I feel like in, in anyone that I have like chosen to love actively, I have 
impacted their life in an unforgettable way. And I'm saying that based on what they've told me. Yeah. And so for that reason, I would say my love is life changing. That is so nice. Do you know what? It's actually so lovely to talk to you and talk to someone who talks about their love with an absence of doubt. Yeah. Because I feel like everyone was like, oh, but I guess, oh, oh, oh. Like the people were so scared to talk about all this greatness. They were like, oh, but what if we break up? Yeah. And I think there was something, if I leave that with anybody and I think what you've left with me is that like, it's good to have hope. Like things might change. Yeah. But you don't have to sit on that like, oh, but what if it goes badly? Oh, but what if it goes badly? You don't badly? have to live in fear. Yeah. And I think sometimes people are scared of publicly asserting things should things go sour. And so my friends will say, oh yeah, but Tony, what if you're, you say all this, you do all this and it doesn't work out? That's life. Then it doesn't work out. Doesn't work out. But I'm not going to, I don't want to look back at the love and say, you know what? I met someone who I believed was the love of my life and I did not give it 110%. Like I'm going to give it 150 percent so no matter what happens I will never look back with regret well I've got nothing else to add <laughs> <laughs> less than learned thank you so much for coming Tony. thank you for having me amazing to have you time. Time. so good to have a conversation about you you guys let us know what you think about our conversation what you think about being loved loudly loving loudly and also any experiences with American men that might be a bit corny or not <laughs> use the hashtag my love is and we'll be back next week Thank you so much, Tony. Bye. Bye.